Good morning. Taxation Law and Practice Unit 5 Central Excise Duty. I, Mrs. D. Parimla Devi, Assistant Professor, Department of Business Administration, is presenting the introduction about Central Excise Duty. At the end of this presentation, you will be able to know the meaning of a central excise duty to understand the components of central excise law and you will be make aware of the acts, rules and judgments in the central excise law. Meaning of central excise duty It is nothing but the levy of, on manufacture or production of excisable goods. Excise duty is a duty on manufacture or production of goods Taxable event in case of levy of ex central excise duty is the manufacture or production of excisable goods within the country for home consumption. Excise duty is an indirect tax. Its impact or liability to pay falls on the manufacturer or producer of excisable goods. But the incidence or tax burden is generally passed on to the consumer. The power of levy in central excise is levied and collected by central government under Central Excise Act 1944. The Act itself has been passed under the authority of Entry 84 of the Union List in the 7th Schedule to the Constitution of India. Sharing of central excise is between the central government and the state government. According to Article 272 of Constitution of India, if any law passed by the Parliament so provides, the central government shall share the central excise duty levied and collected by it with the states. The share of uh, states will be as per the law passed by the parliament. Generally, central excise duties on medicinal and toilet preparations will be levied by the central government but collected and appropriated by state government. Other central excise duties will be levied by the central government but distributed between the center and states according to the recommendations of Finance Commission. Next, we shall see the components of central excise law. The law of central excise consists of acts passed by parliament, rules framed by the central board of excise and customs, as also notifications and circulars issued by it and the judgments rendered by the appellate authorities including courts. First, we shall see the acts passed by the parliament. It is the basic act. It contains provisions as regards to the following like uh, levy and collection of duty, powers and duties of officers, settlement procedure, appeals, presumptions as to documents, refund, transport by sea, adjudication of confiscation and penalties, supplemental provisions. Earlier, the Central Excise Act also contains provisions as to classification of goods for the purpose of levy of ex Central Excise Duty and rates of duty, but it has been change to Central Excise Tariff Act. Next law is Central Excise Tariff Act 1985. It is It classifies excisable goods for purpose of levy and prescribes the rates of duty. It contains 20 sections and 96 chapters. It gives each tariff item a specific code. Based on this, tariff items are classified under appropriate chapter heads, subheads, for the purpose of charge of duty. The next act is Additional Duties of Excise Goods on Special Importance Act 1957. It prescribes the levy of an additional duty of excise on goods of special importance as specified in the Central Sales Tax Act. Example, sugar, cigarettes, cotton and woolen fabrics, silk, special woven fabrics etc. This additional duty is charged in lieu of sales tax and is passed on to the states. The next act is Additional Duties of Excise Textiles and Textile Articles Act 1978. It prescribes an additional duty on goods of specified description as mentioned in the schedule. Such duty will be for purposes of union and proceeds will not be disturbed among the state. The next act is Medicinal and Toilet Preparations Excise Duty Act 1955. It levies excise duty on medicinal and toilet preparations in the manufacture of which alcohol or any narcotic substance is used but on which no duty is leviable under any act.
this excise duty in this case thou levied and collected by the central government is di distributed between the state the last act under this is mineral products additional duties of excise and customs act 1958 it prescribes a levy of additional excise and customs of certain mineral products such as motor spirit kerosene refined diesel oils and specified diesel oil furnace oil asphalt and bitumen etc the next heading is excise rules and notifications there are number of uh, excise rules and notifications are there besides the act there are rules and notifications of the central government for proper administration of the excise and customs law the rules are required to be placed in both houses of parliament for a period of 30 days comprised in one or more successive sessions of the legislature the effect of such rules and notifications will be subject to approval by the two houses but without prejudice to anything done prior to the approval among them the most important rules are given below the first one is central excise number 2 rules 2001 they are framed by the central government they prescribe procedures in respect of accounting of goods clearance and storage of goods registration of dealers refund appeals levy of uh, central excise is mainly based on rules and hence these must be strictly followed the second one is central excise valuation determination of prices of excisable goods rules 2000 ordinarily valuation of goods for the purpose of levy of excise is as per the central excise act that is to say at the transaction value however transaction value will be excisable value only if the assessee and buyer are not related person the price is the sole consideration for sale and goods delivered at the time and place of removal the next one is senvat credit rule 2002 These rules provide rules for allowing credit of duty paid on specified inputs and capital goods used in and in relation to manufacture of specified final goods. The next one is Customs and Central Excise Duty Drawback Rule 2000 1995. They prescribe rules for allowances of duty drawback in respect of duty paid imported goods which are exported out of India. The next one is CESAT procedure rules 1982 they are framed by customs excise and service tax appellate they prescribe rules such as procedure for filling an appeal date of presentation of appeal contents of memorandum of appeal grounds which may be taken in appeal rejection or amendment of memorandum of appeal and hearing of appeal the last part is notification and circulars under section 5 subsection 1 and 11 c of central excise act the central government make rules issue and issues notifications to grant full or partial exemption from levy of excise duty on any goods under 5a subsection 2 the government can exempt goods from service excise in public interest the effective date of every notification is issued under section 5a1 will ordinarily be the date of its issue by the central government for publication in the official gazette the last part is judgment or orders of appellate authority there are two appellate forum under the central excise act one the commissioner appeals and other is the customs excise and service tax appellate tribunal if there are conflicts judgments of high court on any question of law the cesat may refer it directly to the supreme court judgment of the supreme court will be binding on all courts and government offices of the country while judgments of high court will be binding under its respective jurisdiction the summary is central excise is an indirect tax levied on the manufacture or production of goods excise duties on medicinal and toilet preparations are levied by the central government but collected and appropriated by the state government the law of central excise consists of acts passed by parliament rules framed by the central board of excise and customs as also notifications and circulars issued by it and the judgment rendered by appellate authority including courts thank you